bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another encouragement here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother, because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters is Jesus. Welcome, Facebook family. Welcome, YouTube family. My, I call you my forever family. You are my eternal family. I want to talk to you about today an encouragement I've titled Things That Make You Go Hmm. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, this is Paul talking to Timothy, a young preacher up under him, giving him some advice, telling him, just giving him game, giving him what it's all about, the gospel and how he should be, right? And so we want to talk about this. We want to know what God is pinned through the Apostle Paul to say to young Timothy, to say to us who live today, right? He says in verse 14, young Timothy, look down, remind them of this. And tell them in the name of God. This is serious stuff, Timmy. This is serious stuff, I'm telling you. Remind them of this and, and tell them in the name of God that there is to be no fussing about words. Legalism, grace, pre-tribulation, rapture, post-tribulation, mid-trib. You're going to, uh, women wear dresses, you wear a covering. You know what I mean? There's going to be no fussing and back and forth. What are you seeing on online these days? What are you hearing? The exact opposite of what the Lord is telling us to do. There's to be no wrangling about words, no fussing about words. All that is, All that this ever achieves is the destruction of those who are listening. This is why the Apostle Paul told young Timothy to, to not to teach this to us because all it does is bring about more sin and it's destructive to the body of Christ. We're talking about things that make you go, hmm. Do all you can to present yourself in front of God as a man who has come through his trials. Right now you're looking at this man here. I've come through my trial. By the grace of God, I've come through drugs. I've come through uh, uh, alcohol. I've come through living an immoral life. I do my best to present myself as a man who, who God has brought through his trials. And a man who has no cause to be ashamed of his life's work. By my own conscience, since, uh, since two 2006, since I got saved, I have been pursuing Jesus and running after him. I don't have to be ashamed of anything. The Holy Spirit has been working in my life. This is what I'm trying to pass down to you. So we must live a life that doesn't bring shame to Jesus. We're talking about things that make you go, hmm. And has kept a straight course with the message, the message of the truth. I, I don't come on here and tell you anything different. I give you the gospel every single time that Jesus was born of a virgin, put down all the, the celebration and worship in heaven and on earth to come down here as a man born through a virgin. He lived 33 years. He never sinned. He went to the cross carrying your sin and my sin. He died, was buried, raised on the third day to, to life everlasting. See, the hell couldn't hold on to Jesus because Jesus had never sinned. Yet, he spent days in darkness for me and you, taking the keys to death, hell, and the grave away from Satan. Hallelujah, so we could be saved today. We're talking about things that make you go, hmm. 
That's powerful, isn't it? This is the king that we serve. This is our Lord, our Savior. If you put, if you put your trust in what he did, for God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on, rely on, trust in, leaning on with all of their heart, all of their mind, all of their soul, all of their strength. You too shall be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Turning away from your sins, the, your three enemies, the world, the flesh and the devil. My pastor used to say that he's with the Lord now. Have nothing to do with pointless philosophical discussions. Talking about nothing. How about talking about lives being changed? Lives being changed by the Holy Spirit. It say they only lead to further and further. They only lead people further and further away from true religion. And, and philosophical discussions about nothing in the kingdom. It says talk like Talk of this kind corrodes like gangrene, as in the case of Hymenius and Philetus. He had an example of two brothers that was already doing this, clashing against the body, talking about worthless things. What's the best way? What's the talking about pointless things? It say the men who have gone right away from the truth and claim that the resurrection has already taken place. They was confusing people about when Jesus was coming and was there gonna be a resurrection or was there not? You see what I'm saying? Pointless. And it's destroying the people who are listening, who need to find God. Some people's faith cannot stand up to them. We have to be careful what we're putting out here. These messages that we put out. Are we leading people to Jesus? Are we pointing people to Jesus? Are we leading people away and straight to hell? It says, however, God's solid foundation stone is still in position. He's talking about how the, the gospel message is still victorious. It is still the very foundation of life eternal. And this is the inscription that's on it. He like, despite all the things that's going on, the, all that the devil is trying to do in God's kingdom, trying to prevent people from getting saved and trying to lead people away that are saved away from Christ, God's word still stands as the foundation with this inscription that's written on it. And on the inscription it says, the Lord knows those that are his own. The Lord knows those. I guess they were confusing people about who's saved and who's not. The Lord knows who belongs to him, you all. And all who come, all who call on the name of the Lord must avoid sin. You see, because people have been going back and forth on this subject too also. Oh no, you know, once you believe on Jesus, you don't you don't have to repent no more. Man, you have to turn away from your sins. You do have to repent of your sins. All who call on the name of the Lord must avoid sin. Things that make you go, hmm. Not all the dishes in the large house are made of gold and silver. Some are made of wood and earth and earthenware. Some are kept for special occasions and other are for ordinary purposes. Now to avoid these faults that I am speaking about is the way for anyone to become the vessel for special occasions. He's like in a, in a rich man's home, he's talking about the Lord. In the kingdom of God, you got some people that are there. The things they do for Jesus are gold and silver. You got some people, the things that they do for God are, are wood. It says um, wood and what else? Wood and earthenware. But see, all of these different materials, they belong to God, right? Now he's talking about to Timothy being used by the Lord. He's saying, if you keep yourself pure from these sins, all of this 
bickering back and forth, if you avoid all this evil, then the Lord will begin to use you. Isn't that what we want, brothers and sisters? Don't we want to be used by God? Don't we want to be in his will? Don't we want to help other people to get saved? He's talking about your purity. We must turn away from sin. You must, you must live your life to honor the Lord and not to bring shame to his name. We're talking about things that make you go, hmm. These are the pure teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, if you, if you keep yourself uh, as a clean vessel, then the master can, can use you for his special work. We need to be ready. We need to make ourselves ready in our lives, lead clean lives so that the Lord Jesus can use us. I want to be used of the Lord. H haven't you said that to him before? Lord, use me for your glory. Well, this is one way you keep yourself clean. We know that the Lord has practically, um, uh, uh, he practically in the spirit, we are made holy already, right? But he said, if you keep yourself clean, if you keep yourself pure, if you keep pursuing God, if you make sure that you are a clean vessel, the Lord will use you for his good work. This is what we want. Instead of giving in to your impulses like a young man, fasten your attention on holiness, on faith, on love, on peace. What does that sound like to you? The fruits of the spirit. He said, fasten yourself to these. Things that make us go, hmm. These are the, the godly, good, Holy Spirit inspired teachings. Pinned by the Apostle Paul to, to another saved man. Let us glorify the Lord with our lives. Let us magnify him with our lives. We can bring him glory and in eternity. He will be smiling at us because we have, we, have, uh, we have been faithful to his calls, to the gospel. Lord, thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word which teaches us, Father. Your word continues to astound us, Father. It continues to, to grow us up, Father, and show us your way. You are the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by you. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray that we would glorify and magnify your name, make your name bigger in the earth, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. And that's all we want in our lives, Father. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the glory and all the honor for it belongs to you. These things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, our king, our savior, our brother, our master. And we say amen and amen. Things that make you go, hmm. Be blessed. Endure as a good soldier of Christ. Honor the Lord with your life. Let's bring Jesus glory in these last days. Thank you, family, for listening. Give this video the thumbs up so that other people will hear of the gospel of Jesus. Amen. I'm second.